Welcome to NMH at 1 on this Tuesday, of course, the 19th of May 2020. Today, now, before we do the rest of the show, very, very uh, just, uh, recently announced by the Ministry of Education, there were, was a lot of anticipation about when schools will start, and Cabinet has now made a decision, and we share it with you as follows. Now, for grade 11 and 12, schools will already start on the 3rd of June, and uh, the term for them will run until the 18th of December. Phase 2, then, uh, that is for uh, the grades pre-primary up to grade one, including grade, uh, sorry, grade three, in other words. They will start already on the 22nd of June, also running up to 18 December. And then there's for grade seven and nine, they will start now already in July, the 6th of July, everyone going school until 18 December this year and grade four, five, six and eight, they will resume with classes on July the 20th. So all of these times a bit earlier than originally anticipated, which was of course only in August, the 3rd of August was that date. Now, it doesn't matter if you live in Vintuk or not, City of Vintuk residents were able to save a 7% uh, water that is on the target of 15%. Uh, now, this is for the current rainy season still uh, less than the requested uh, amount of water. And that figure stands at as minus 0.6%. So a lot of us still have to heat the call here in Vintuk. So that 100% you saw that actually already includes the 15% required saving. Namibia Breweries Limited recently donated fruit juice valued at over $100,000 to the shelters in Vintu currently providing a lockdown home for more than 400 homeless people. NBL also previously donated 53 tents to this project. So yes, we like to share this good news, good acts and important news for our communities. Now up next, we are going to look at some video inserts and today the focus is coming from Kavango East, also under our community brand for the North, Ewi Yanuli. And this content was contributed by Kenya Kambowe, of course a journalist for the Namibian Son. Now, first of all, we start with a lady. She used to be suffering from leprosy as well. And uh, a chicken coop has been uh, damaged over uh, some time already by different um, causes like wind, etc. It's Me Esther Mahano Alupe. She's 70 years old. Kenya visited her. And she tells him uh, what her situation is currently. She lives in Mashare. Up. Akumon. Up. Papa, take an up. 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 Kazawa <laughs> Food 
packages were handed over to players at the once again football club in Rundu, who are currently without income, and Kenya Kamboe captured the following footage as well. <music> Firstly, uh, I'll say I would like to thank God who blessed the people who blessed us with the parcels, uh, with the idea. Uh, so yeah, on behalf of my players, we are we are very very much grateful for the donations, especially to the manager of uh, Oceano Atlantico. He's he's really been there for us, and to the management of Once Again Football Club. Yeah, they've been really. Uh, a blessing. It's, it's an honor to play for the club. They have been supporting us not just on the field but off the field as well. So we are really grateful. Yes. As the captain of the team, I just want to find out how are you ensuring that your fellow uh, soldiers are, ensure, are keeping fit during this lockdown? Yeah, uh, as we know, the whole nation is on lockdown. No, so no sports. Yeah, but as a sportsman, you don't really need the team to be fit. As a sportsman, you, you just have to get fit on your own. Uh, back door workouts, just behind the door, I mean behind the, uh, the, 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 the yard, hey, on, the, on your backyard. You can work out on your backyard and yeah, just keep yourself fit. Is there anything else, any other anything else you'd like to say? To your fellow teammates, maybe to keep exercising or during this time and stuff like that? Yeah, it's just a message to, not just to my teammates, but to fellow sportsmen out there. To just keep on working hard, you know. Uh, so when the, 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 this pandemic ends, at least you are not going to start off from scratch. At least you are still keeping fit at home. So yeah, just stay fit at home. Yes. One of our viewers just asked whether we can uh, repeat uh, the times school will open for the different uh, 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 grades in Namibia. So we gladly do that very uh, quickly. The news came in very late. Otherwise, we could have, uh, of course, displayed it visually for you. So for grade 11 and 12, they will start on the 3rd of June. Uh, Pre-primary up to grade 3, the 22nd of June, grades 7 and 9 will start on Monday 6 July and then the rest of the grades, that's grades 4, 5, 6 and 8, they will resume with their classes on Monday the 20th of July. I think that's good news for a lot of people. Now a quick glance at today's front pages in uh, Namibia, starting out with the three dailies of uh, Namibia Media Holdings. You will see there at uh, the right the Republican leads with transport stories, also dealing with uh, goods coming from Bots Botswana. The Namibian Sun leading with the TIF amongst the Ova Herero speaking uh, members, uh, especially uh, from Nudo, and fines that were handed down by a traditional court. And Algemeine Zeitung, they speak about the NCCI and their struggle with banks to get assistance during the COVID 19 pandemic. Now, in the dailies today, of course, again, schoolwork uh, for the children who are at home and hasn't got tablets maybe and can, cannot follow online learning. So today's booklet is dealing specifically with, uh, that is uh, I think mathematics and science as well as English. That is uh, week three for uh, that specific grade. We just show you again that page quickly. Uh, obviously also the Namibian today dealing with contraception and it's the pill specifically that's not available at clinics anymore and New Era amongst others telling us how 2,000 different people have to use just one toilet. That, that's the challenges we are still facing in Namibia. 
But this show also wants to go to the inside pages and a couple of stories we took out there. First of all, from the Namibian Sun, page three, their lead story deals with students and online learning, especially closing, obviously, of colleges and universities as well. So the NSFAF says they were only able, or they are only able to pay 5,000 and not the envisaged $10,000 to assist, assist students. And only a very small group of 120 students have thus far benefited, benefited. from a Republicans uh, inside pages uh, about the robot news there. Yeah, due to COVID-19, they are struggling still further to pay uh, NAM water and also NAM power. Their power bill standing at $129 million at the moment. The Allgemeine Zeitung carries inside quite a poignant uh, picture of uh, the funeral over this weekend of a young paramedic who in a very tragic and a gruesome situation took his own life. From a new era's inside pages, a political story, the landless people's movement, they are saying that members of parliament and also other politicians must not benefit uh, from any fishing quotas and if they are partners in such businesses these quotas must be removed and then finally something from the uh, namibian outright namibia are saying uh, that the time has arrived now for uh, sodomy which is of course criminalized still according to old legislation in namibia for that to be taken off the law books in the time of COVID-19, of course, businesses are facing huge challenges and uh, they have to find new income streams. And that is the topic of our interview uh, today. Jana Marie Smith spoke to uh, Sun Cycles and they are going to share their recipe and also uh, how this allowed them to actually hire additional people during these very tough times. With Corona, everything changed. Um, obviously, tourism is not doing so well at the moment. We don't know when the industry will recover. So we had to find a different solution for our business so we can keep going. So we had a whole fleet of e-bikes on the ground ready, waiting for the tourists, which are now not coming. And then we went into deliveries. We just thought this is the best thing to do. There's already a need for people that can't leave their houses. They want to have goods brought to them. So um, it was originally for a one-person job and it's turned out to be six in the end. Um, so the demand has been really huge. So we started catering to those hungry clients that are not able to access their favorite restaurants anymore. And it started picking up in such a way that we were able to employ six people in the last two weeks that are now constantly on the road doing deliveries for us. Um, and despite the fact that the lockdown has been lifted and people are sort of taking their own cars to pick up what they need, there is still a big demand for deliveries. So we are full with all our full force into this business at the moment, doing green deliveries for Ventok. Um, This is probably the fourth day that I'm here. So I'm quite new. Fortunate for me, uh, yeah, I, I started riding when I was still young. Other than, than, than being, being able to, to cycle itself, you need confidence on the road itself. You need to be vigilant for upcoming uh, traffic and so forth. Overall, um, it saves the environment um, and then uh, at the same time you get your item uh, at a quicker uh, pace than, than a car itself. Okay, so we do everything, all kinds of deliveries from an envelope to a sack of cement. We can really do it all. We have different vehicles available, both vehicles, I mean electric bicycles, that can cater to different loading capacities. So we can take up to 200 kilograms on an electric bike. Five years ago in one month, um, we started this business um, as e-bikes for Africa. We bought the first e-bike into Namibia at the end of 2014. From scratch, we <coughs> first started with converting normal bicycles to e-bikes. And then um, we directly communicated with the frame manufacturer. We make our own design because it's also something special for Namibia. We need special batteries and special motors that can withstand the heat. 
And so this is totally our design, our brand, so we're the first African e-bike brand. We cater to lodges that are eco-conscious, that want to make a difference in terms of um, carbon emissions and try to eliminate that or at least lessen it a little bit. Um, so we have a lot of lodges on board that have bought fleets of e-bikes for their tourists to move around the premises. Um, that was now before Corona happened. So then Corona happened and our business changed. Uh, my job is mechanic and designing the bikes if some customer want to come and they need other designs. Yeah, e-bike is very nice because it's like, uh, it's, it's not the bike that you can make uh, uh, exercise, but it's the bike that you can travel for so long as you want to go. Let me say if you have an e-bike, uh, you are staying at a village, at the desert, at the mountain, uh, it's very comfortable for you to use an e-bike because it's, it's having uh, 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 assistance for itself and where you want to go. Nothing can stop a bike in Namibia. An e bike is the better bicycle and the better motorcycle, it's in between. Um, it comes with a battery and a motor, so you don't have to pedal that much. It pushes you up the hill, long distances, fast, not a problem, you don't sweat. So you can leave your car at home <coughs> or save some taxi money. And also at the same time, get healthy. And save the environment. And safe the environment, yes. <laughs> Since we are in one of the sunniest locations on this whole planet, we have around four times the average radiation as we have in Europe, in Central Europe. Um, not using the sun would be foolish, and importing fuels is even more foolish. foolish. So we use uh, solar panels to recharge our batteries. Um, we build those stations here locally because there's nothing on the market yet. It's a pretty simple setup. We also um, highlight that we are an open source um, enterprise, so we make all our knowledge available to everyone who is interested. Our workshop is open for everyone who wants to build their own or wants to learn about the technology or wants to build their own bicycle or their own recharge. So we provide the tools and the uh, know-how because we think independent, being independent from big uh, companies and fossil fuel is the way to go in the future. Also in terms of the economy, when you look at a normal car, you buy the car, which is being produced not in Namibia, then you buy fuels, which is not being produced in Namibia. So around 75% of the value of a car goes outside of our local economy. When you look at the bicycle, it's exactly the other way around, 75% of the value rate stays within the community, within the a local economy. So I think this is for every politician, this is quite an argument to create employment. Yes, overall, it's the most energy efficient and most affordable way of moving. It is even more affordable than walking because when you walk, you need more calories that produce more carbon emission by growing crops, transporting it, you're making bread out of it, you're eating it and then walking. So an e-bike even beats walking in terms of carbon emissions. So the bike is around 10,000 times more energy efficient than a car. When you look at production, you also have a certain energy input to produce things. Um, to produce a car, you have around you need around 100 times more energy than you need to produce an e-bike. So for one car, you can produce 100 e-bikes. It's very affordable. Um, the official AA rates at the moment, AA Namibia, they give for a small petrol car that is already 10 years old. They calculate five to six num dollars costs per kilometer, including maintenance, including fuels, including insurance as a whole <clears throat> setup. For the e-bike, we go for around 0 0.5 num dollar per kilometer. Cycling in general, it's a really nice thing to do because you're moving at a faster pace than you would bike. You're not stuck in a little metal cage, which I'm assuming you know I'm talking about the car. You're not shut off from the, the world around you. Um, that's the one thing. The other thing is just the sense of freedom. It's like you're moving nice, you're, especially with an e-bike, you're moving really at a nice fast pace. You've got the wind in your hair, you feel it on your skin. It's just a really nice experience. Um, why I'm saying it's better than a normal bicycle is because it's just less strain on your body. So if you're not a sport cyclist that like I am, um, an e-bike is just a really nice way to still move and have, your, have a little bit of exercise without exhausting yourself.
With Corona, everything changed. Ethnomobia um, media holdings, COVID is and not doing so well has the also we don't know learned us that we have to drastically speed up the way we are telling our stories on different platforms. And this was an excellent example of that. Like I said previously, Jana Marie Smith produced the video. And in Friday's edition of Republican, Tanya Bowser will be telling you this story in print to reach even more people. Now, we wish you a blessed Tuesday and join us tomorrow again for NMH at 1.